fait plus de politiques de conservation et établir une connectivité entre toutes ces zones de conservation et favoriser ainsi la, la biodiversité. Au niveau des, des forêts, eh bien, il faut promouvoir la, la diversité et en particulier les espèces qui sont moins demandeuses en eau, donc des espèces plus adaptées au climat méditerranéen. Et évidemment, euh, développer des politiques euh, de, 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 de prévention des, des incendies. Au niveau de la santé, euh, les, les risques sont assez nombreux. C'est à la fois lié aux vagues de chaleur, en particulier dans les villes, et tout ça a lié à la pollution de l'air et ça occasionne des maladies respiratoires et des maladies cardiovasculaires. Le, les famines aussi, c'est un risque pour la santé, les migrations, les conflits. Il y a les maladies qui sont transportées par les, les vecteurs, comme les moustiques et les tiques. On a les dégâts occasionnés par les événements extrêmes, inondations, comme la destruction des, des, des maisons avec des morts et également des maladies mentales occasionnées par tous ces dégâts. Et il faut vraiment insister sur le fait que les risques sont maximum pour les populations défavorisées. Ça inclut les, les personnes âgées, les enfants et également les personnes avec un faible revenu. Donc, les, les, les buts d'adaptation, eh c'est en particulier pour les, les villes qui, où le, les, les vagues de chaleur sont les plus fortes, il faut adapter évidemment ces villes à, avec un verdissement, avec plus de parcs, euh, réintroduisant la végétation et l'eau dans, dans ces villes. Il faut euh, diminuer le, le bétonnage, avoir des plans euh, climatiques euh, intégrés et également euh, et c est, c est, ce savoir euh, traditionnel et local est très important tout autour de la Méditerranée. Il faut euh, réutiliser en fait ce, ce savoir qui a eu tendance à, à être un peu perdu. Évidemment, il faut aussi euh, développer des systèmes de santé euh, suffisamment euh, forts pour euh, prévenir euh, tous ces problèmes et euh, il faut également favoriser la collaboration euh, interfrontière. Alors, euh, maintenant, si on veut arriver euh, au niveau de la, des solutions euh, d'atténuation de, du changement climatique, et il s'agit essentiellement euh, à la fois de la transition énergétique et de la séquestration du, du carbone. Alors, euh, il faut savoir que les émissions de la Méditerranée, c'est 6 des émissions globales, ce qui est à peu près équivalent à la proportion de population. Mais en Méditerranée, 76 de l'énergie est encore basée sur le fossile. Donc là, il y a une, une nécessité d'aller vers une transition énergétique accélérée avec un développement des énergies renouvelables parce que justement, la Méditerranée a beaucoup de potentiel à ce niveau-là. Alors, il y a un déséquilibre entre le nord et l'est et le sud. Le nord a déjà entamé sa transition avec une demande qui a diminué de 10 à 23 qui va diminuer pardon, de 10 à 23 en 2040. Et c'est en particulier en par, facilité par la diminution de la population et la désindustrialisation. Mais c'est aussi lié à une diversification du mix énergétique et l'augmentation de l'efficacité énergétique. Alors qu'au même moment, dans le sud et dans l'est, c'est plutôt une augmentation de la demande qui va avoir lieu, en particulier avec une population qui s'accroît énormément et un développement industriel également qui augmente. Mais il y a également un retard dans la transition énergétique. Et le, le secteur énergétique du sud a besoin d'une meilleure organisation et d'une meilleure intégration. Et pour le, la séquestration du, du carbone, il y a les solutions basées sur euh, la nature qui sont vraiment importantes à, à développer. Et euh, en particulier, il faut euh, développer des méthodes, par exemple, d'agroécologie qui sont capables de plus stocker de, de carbone dans les sols et développer évidemment les forêts et les zones humides qui, par rapport à leur surface, stockent beaucoup plus de carbone que les zones sèches. Et pour terminer, euh, euh, il, il, faut, il faut absolument insister sur un certain nombre de points qui est que euh, la lutte contre le changement climatique doit se faire absolument en lien avec les objectifs du développement durable. La pauvreté, les inégalités, le, le, balan, le, le déséquilibre de genre, tout ça euh, empêche euh, d'arriver à, à des solutions qui soient euh, viables. Donc, il faut absolument euh, lutter contre ces inégalités en parallèle. Ça nécessite une amélioration 
de l'habitat, des infrastructures, une meilleure éducation, en particulier pour les communautés les plus vulnérables, une implémentation des systèmes de détection et d'avertissement et un renforcement des, 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 des systèmes de, de secours et des systèmes de santé. La Méditerranée est une région de, de, de culture très ancienne et la culture est un, un facteur clé pour le succès de, de ces adaptations. Et donc, il faut absolument s'appuyer euh, là-dessus. Et pour finir, euh, je voudrais insister sur le fait que les échanges entre les scientifiques, comme ce qu'on a fait euh, et qu'on est en train toujours de faire avec euh, MEDEC, sont très importants, avec un transfert de savoir entre les différentes régions de la Méditerranée avec l'aide à Capacity Building et surtout le dialogue, améliorer le dialogue entre sciences et société. Et donc, c'est évidemment ce qu'on essaye de faire et j'espère que cette petite réunion ici va aller dans le bon sens. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Allô je vais... Alors, je suis prêt à continuer. Un grand, grand merci. C'était extrêmement intéressant. Et je pense que cette coopération avec vos institutions et les plans bleus, c'est ce de laquelle notre Assemblée a besoin. Imaginez-vous que dans le passé, le premier rapport de notre Assemblée sur la biodiversité en Méditerranée était préparé par Mistral. Et nous, on travaille aussi avec des institutions telles que la fondation de Natta, du professeur Natta, les, les, les prix Nobel pour la chimie, qui nous avait accueilli une délégation de l'APM euh, dans son institution pour la récupération des sols, des terrains brûlés. Ou on travaille nous aussi avec l'université de Naples, la faculté de biologie sur les microplastiques dans les sols où il y a la production alimentaire. Donc, pour l'APM, c'est très, très important. Maintenant que nous avons écouté les experts, on ouvre la phase du débat et la première personne inscrite, c'est un délégué de l'APM de l'Algérie, euh, l'honorable Amar Moussi, qui est une, un délégué très actif dans notre Assemblée. Et Amar, the floor is yours, please. Microphone. OK. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all our speakers who gave us a clear vision about the situation of climate changes in our region, the Mediterranean region. Uh, I will start with a proverb, a local proverb, which says, even the caravan is unique, but everyone cares about his camel. I think it's clear. Uh, of course, environment is a world concern, but we have the obligation to look after our Mediterranean region, which is the most affected by these climate changes, which are reflected by a regular rise of temperature and the drought that affect most of, of our countries, especially the Southern countries. As it said, the environment is one of the human rights and considered the third generation of human rights. It is necessary to mention that, uh, uh, that, that administrative protection, protection, which is a preventive action by issuing necessary legislative measures is more important and more effective than the criminal protection, which is a, a curative or um, uh, a curative uh, action, since it is uh, action. That's why, I would say, for the fulfillment of our environment protection ambitions, it is necessary. It is necessary to spread the culture, not just a bulk or bulk of legislation, but a culture 
of environment protection. In Algeria, this is among the goals adopted by our institutions in all sectors, starting by schools, universities, economic sector, and so on. You cannot invest if you don't respect and observe the environmental conditions, whatever the importance of your project. Uh, so uh, uh, for nowadays, the pandemic has shown us that we can save our planet just by, by reducing a bit carbon emissions. So let's hope for a green post pandemic restart. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, all speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. Thank you to you, dear Amar. Thanks a lot. And now next on the list is Professor Mukesh Kabila, who is the senior advisor to PAM for global health and governance issues. Mukesh, the floor is yours. Microphone, microphone. Um, yeah, thank you, Sergio, for the opportunity to make a brief uh, uh, comment. Uh, uh, excellent presentations and which brought home the severity and complexity of the crisis in the Mediterranean region. Uh, my uh, feeling is that sometimes when you have so much complexity, uh, one can feel somewhat disempowered because everything is so big, everything is uh, interconnected, and uh, uh, interventions are in each sector require a huge amount of effort and initiative. So what I would also suggest in moving forward is to, to break things down. So for example, in uh, my own area of interest, which is, which is health, we are already seeing the devastating impacts of climate change on human health and the adaptation of health systems. So I would suggest that in the processes ahead, we have a track that uh, covers that uh, specifically within the bigger picture, as well as of course, similar tracks in education and other areas. Maybe you already have that in mind, but I would have thought that other experts in other sectors can bring specific expertise in uh, narrower areas, but the results in the end, they will depend on actions in particular sectors. Thank you. Thank you to you, Mukesh. Now, the next that I have on the list is Professor Nayat Saliba from the American University of Beirut, please. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you um, for the invitation and for the interesting talks. Of course, science is extremely important and we saw the beautiful inventory and recommendations that were given by our colleagues. But I would like to see a bold, I would like to us think together about a bolder action. I think uh, business as usual is not going to be in our favor, especially that climate change and the warming uh, of the planet is accelerating. Uh, maybe it will be a, an excellent idea if we can come up with one recommendation that will help us at least fix one of the problems in the Mediterranean region. And uh, this will be a great opportunity if we think all together to at least attend or try to mitigate in the near future, let's say put, put for ourselves one or two years max to solve or to, uh, to, to, to try to mitigate one of the problem at least so that we can, we can feel that things are starting to move in the, in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you to you, Professor Saliba. And uh, the next on the list is Dr. Marianne Mensa from the Sustainable Design School UCA. Well, if she is not ready, I now give the floor to our friend Ofer Berzak, 
a specialist in aquaculture and is a long time friend of Pam. If you can very briefly come on your comment on the overfishing and solution, because then I have to move to the conclusion. Thank you, Offer. Okay, I hope that you hear me. Thank you very much. I will try to speak um, shortly and the people understand exactly. We, uh, we offer restocking enhancement in Mediterranean Sea. The, in 1982, it was a um, fish crop was about 1,200,000 ton a year. And now, 31 years after it, we are talking about 825,000. So we, our plan to make stocking enhancement, we prepare a group from few experts from around the eight country around the Mediterranean. We began to work and we will find um, the kind of the fish that we know how to reproduce them artificially and to begin and to work after we will visit Japan, South Korea and United States. And our plan to recover this problem during 10 till 15 years and to produce more feed as you ask and the feed, it's not only the, the, the fishermen, also for the sport fishing and for the, the tourist places. And that we, we have to do, we began to work. And uh, thank you, um, dear Ambassador Piazzi, to invite me. And we are continue to work. Thank you very much. Well, fair, and you know that Pam is very happy to, to support your initiative. Now I have uh, Marianne Menza, who is ready. Two minutes for you, Marianne, please. Microphone, microphone, Marianne. You are not connected. You are on mute. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Piazzi, uh, um, and uh, to all the speakers for this very interesting uh, presentation uh, and uh, on uh, the state of uh, urgency of uh, climate change in the Mediterranean. Uh, I would like to highlight the importance of uh, education and uh, in the current situation where we have a, a great um, call uh, for a European project on education and climate change uh, in the framework of the European Green Deal. Uh, I'd like to um, really highlight the opportunity uh, for um, uh, the assembly here to um, really um, contact uh, all the European networks uh, in the field of education and climate change and alert them on the importance of taking into consideration uh, the situation in the Mediterranean, um, because we really have here uh, the opportunity of uh, mobilizing um, the science uh, and, uh, and the education system in order to uh, 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 also uh, mobilize the community in favor of the south of the Mediterranean. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Now, I would like to ask Professor Gekka and Joel Gio if you have a few words to say at, while we move to the conclusion, now that you have heard also some comments from our delegates. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, I think uh, there is not one precise question that I would like to answer, uh, but I think uh, the main point which I really uh, noticed is that this idea about having one specific topic on which to bring uh, changes very quickly. 
And I think, in fact, that we have a lot of communities around our sea, and we have a lot of opportunities to, to make changes happen uh, together. Uh, so we should not be uh, not enough ambitious. We should try to work on several streams at the same time. Uh, the way we see our role in Plan Bleu and in the map system is really to facilitate exchanges and progress. And for example, right now, I am learning on aquaculture and discovering a lot of things on aquaculture, but I am also learning on the revolutions which are feasible and which are brought in some specific areas and some specific projects. And really bringing people together and learning one from the other is really a, a way to bring changes in a very quick and efficient way. So I'm really pushing for, for all that. Thank you very much. Thank you to you and uh, Monsieur Guillaume. Oui, moi je pense que, bon, évidemment, on a parlé de qu'est-ce qu'il fallait faire de manière la plus urgente pour euh, essayer de s'attaquer aux problèmes climatiques. Et eh bien, c'est évidemment se conformer au à l'accord de Paris et donc de réduire ses émissions à la fois en transformant les énergies fossiles en énergies renouvelables et en faisant un maximum pour séquestrer du carbone quand, quand celui-ci reste quand même finalement euh, est toujours émis. Par contre, euh, en ce qui concerne euh, l'adaptation au changement climatique, c'est vraiment très important, comme ça a été dit, d'établir de, 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 de meilleures relations entre les différents pays, entre les scientifiques, entre les scientifiques et les jeunes, entre les politiciens, les scientifiques et tout, tout, toutes les communautés qui peuvent contribuer à la lutte contre le changement climatique de manière à améliorer le dialogue et vraiment euh, aller dans, dans la bonne direction. Je pense qu'il y a des tas de bonnes volontés un peu partout. Il faut simplement euh, peut-être euh, mieux s'organiser et... Euh, Et je pense que MEDEC, c'est vraiment une des, des voies dans, vers laquelle il, il, enfin, qu'il faut renforcer et vers laquelle il faut aller, parce que ça permet justement ce dialogue. Vous avez à la fois des experts qui connaissent le, le problème et des experts en fait qui désirent partager leur savoir avec tous les pays qui ont besoin de, de, de ces connaissances. Donc, je pense qu'il faut vraiment renforcer ce dialogue. Et si le Parlement que vous représentez est d'accord pour le faire, je pense que c'est vraiment une très très bonne action à, à conduire. I could, uh, yes, indeed, and this is what I was going to say, because uh, there is no space for duplication. The resources are limited, and only the synergy between what you are doing, and the parliamentarians, and the government, and civil society can make the difference. Uh, now, we are coming to an end and I have the pleasure to call Honorable Pedro Roque, who is the President Emeritus of PAM. He is also the President of the Second Standing Committee on Economic and Environmental Issues and, and who before Honorable Perea has also attended a number of COP on behalf of PAM. So, Honorable Roque, please, I have the pleasure to give you the floor for the concluding remarks. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, <clears throat> uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished guests and dear friends. In my capacity of president of the PAM Second Standing Committee, let me begin by offering uh, sincere thanks and gratitude to our contributors and to all the attendees of today's webinar. A special thanks is dedicated to our friends from the United Nations Environment Program, Mediterranean Action Program for their support in organizing this event and to our excellent speakers from the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Plan Bleu, and the Mediterranean Experts on Climate and Environmental Change for providing valuable insights towards the development of an effective science policy interface in the Mediterranean region. Today's excellent webinar should serve as a reminder that our efforts towards the realization of a green renaissance in the Mediterranean are only at the beginning. We must commit deeper in the climate action for our future, our region, for our countries, for our cities, and for our common future. The change needed to begin with us, 
As parliamentarians, we are responsible in addressing the immediate and long-term needs of our communities. The two reports presented today clearly underscore the threats posed by climate change and environmental degradation if we continue to lack the foresight and courage to act now. As remarked by the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, during the United Nations Climate Ambition, Ambition Summit on last Saturday, the world will be in a state of climate emergency until carbon neutrality is reached. Our central objective for 2021 must be the establishment of a truly global coalition for carbon neutrality by 2050. The current COVID-19 pandemic has represented challenges that seemed inconceivable one year ago. Today, the capacities and resources we have de developed to respond to this crisis must be transformed to address the transnational threats posed by climate change and environmental degradation. Without a significant course correction, the effects will be even more disruptive to lives and livelihoods than, that, uh, than what uh, we are currently experiencing. Achieving a green renaissance begins with a strong foundational network of policymakers and scientists working together to identify measures that are both impactful and feasible. PAM is committed to supporting the development of these synergies, providing platforms for mutual engagement between parliamentarians and strategic partners, including the four organizations which contribute to this event. In 2021, our assembly will represent the parliamentary dimension of the Euro-Mediterranean and Gulf regions in the number of, cli of critical climate negotiations including COP26 and the next meeting of the contracting parties to the Barcelona Convention, which will take place in Ankara a year time from now. In this perspective, PAM will closely collaborate with UNEP-MAP and UNFCCC to support the preparation of member states for the negotiation that will take place during these two important conferences. Equipped with a strong science policy interface, parliamentarians must serve as the most vocal advocates for implementing the achieving measures that substantively further our shared goal of maintaining the average global temperatures rise below two degrees Celsius by 2050. There must be equally ambitious agendas for improving environmental management practices and halting biodiversity loss. Seizing pollutive practices and extractive industries is essential to reversing the alarming trend at which marine, marine and terrestrial ecosystems are degrading in Mediterranean. Reaching substantive progress on these objectives require policymakers to respond to climate and environmental challenges with the same sense of urgency as was demonstrated during the current COVID-19 pandemic. As COP26 approaches, national determined contributions are required in order to incorporate greater legislative actions. Towards those efforts, PAM is encouraging its member parliaments to revise their national plans and submit new and bolder ones with, by the end of this year. COP26 needs to send a clear signal that the transformations required to put the world towards a green trajectory really are underway. Five years after the Paris Climate Agreement, let us remember that ambition is contagious. The possibility to do more is always within reach and under the current circumstances, we cannot sustain further delays in actions. Dear friends, I would like to close this meeting with uh, my warmest thanks for your contributions to this event. Our webinar served as a stepping stone for strong and prosperous science policy interface mechanisms in our region. 
PAM looks forward to continuing this path with parliamentarians and partners towards a solid green renaissance in the Mediterranean. I thank you all. Pedro, Honorable Roque, thank you very much for your work, uh, for your word, for the closing remarks. Uh, I have received, meanwhile, many requests from participants about getting again the reports and the presentations, which we will do with the great pleasure in cooperation with our colleagues. I also want to ensure the participant, because I got many questions, this is not a stand-alone event. The climate doesn't stop with this conference. We will continue to work with the colleague from UNEP-MAP, from the Framework Convention on Climate Change, from Plan Bleu, MEDECC. It's very important that scientists and parliamentarians and government work together to make sure that what needs to be done is done, that words become action. And also, I will work with Mr. Leone and the other colleagues uh, to make sure that we are well prepared for what will happen during the G20, which is chaired by Italy, if I'm not wrong, this year, and with uh, Mr. Violetti, so that we really make, uh, we joined our effort to have a multiplier effect on our constituencies. And I wish to conclude by thanking the interpreters who have made possible for us to talk today about such an important thing. And let me close the meeting by thanking all of you and the best season greetings to you and your family. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>